Brilliant. Hello. Uh, I'm Martin Webb. As um, just introduced, I'm the Senior Product Manager for our Cloud TV solution at Comcast Technology Solutions, where uh, we've been helping broadcasters and operators across the globe uh, with their own digital transformation journeys. Um, and the, the focus for today's session is to help present some of the analysis from working with those companies to you guys to help you with your own digital transformation journeys. Hopefully this will work. There you go. Uh, so the digital transformation of the TV industry, driven by running entire TV platforms from the cloud, is now in full swing. So during the next 15, 20 minutes, uh, we'll look at defining what digital transformation is. Um, I think that's, even though it's a well-talked about topic, I think that's key to really understand. We'll look at how it's enabling broadcasters and operators um, open new pathways for growth, and then how to ensure your own digital transformation journeys are successful. So firstly, it's key to start, as I said, with defining what digital transformation is. And we define this as something that takes place in two phases. The first phase is all about online as a bolt-on to the existing business. This is where most organizations start, um, typically as a result of simply getting something going being quite a challenge in the early days. But it results typically in two or more silos existing within organizations, uh, the broadcast silo and the online silo, which as a result um, can often uh, result in uh, multiple teams, multiple technology stacks, and even multiple strategies, which can all end up conflicting with each other. So the second stage of digital transformation is where things really get interesting. What we find is that most broadcasters and operators reach a point where the growth opportunities that uh, are, are possible at the beginning start to run dry. They run out of development runway. And this they really then drives organizations to look at the second stage of digital transformation. And that is when organizations look to bring those silos together into an integrated whole. And so at that point, you are converging your technology platforms, you are converging your strategies, but also you're converging your teams. Um, and so that highlights that this digital transformation process is more than just a technology play. It's also a business transformation play as well. So that's the destination, um, but getting there is a journey because this is a organizational transformation story. This isn't something that can be achieved overnight. So we need to build a TV platform that's capable of running multiple TV services from a single platform. So we need the technology. We didn't need to transition to that technology without disrupting the existing business. And finally, we need to connect those teams, bring teams together that often have very different mindsets. Um, I've worked in organizations and seen this happen firsthand. Um, broadcast people and online people have a very different way of approaching problems. Uh, they both bring value, but there's a challenge to bring those two teams together. So it's a journey. Uh, it's not something that can be achieved overnight. But um, as was said in the introduction, um, there are a number of benefits to having done that. And having worked with multiple organizations from across the globe, we've identified these six core benefits that get unlocked when organizations pivot to the second stage of digital transformation. So firstly, saving OPEX. Um, this seems fairly obvious. You're converging multiple teams and technology stacks together. This makes things both cheaper to run, but also operationally simpler. There's a lot of complexity associated with running um, in the cloud. And so converging these technology platforms brings OPEX savings through that simplification. Secondly, increased agility. So we've been talking about online, we've been talking about digital transformation for a number of years. These aren't new topics, but the market is still evolving very, very rapidly. And the second stage of digital transformation, when you've converged those silos together, makes it much simpler to respond to those changes. We're seeing in the market, even the global SVOB uh, service providers are realizing that the single tier, single price point per month strategy isn't working for them even more, even up to the, some of the biggest brands in the market. And they are starting to look to evolve their own business models. So if they are seeing room for innovation in the market, then clearly there's a lot of capacity left for new ideas to emerge. The third key benefit then is the transformation of TV operations into a fully managed service. 
bringing together all of these ideas opens up not only these new benefits, but a lot of complexity. And converging the platforms together allows those to be run as a fully managed service, working with a smaller group of vendors and allowing you guys as content providers, broadcasters and operators to focus on the key things that are important to you, which is your content and your brand. Next, the next key benefit is consistent cross-platform functionality. So again, looking at organizations that they've moved between these stages, it shows that when there are silos in an organization, it opens up the possibility to increase the friction that end users face when they are using your service. So something as simple as metadata, um, to take that as an example. Having silos often means that there's different technology stacks. It means there may be different metadata describing your content. And that can produce something as simple as a given search term returning slightly different results between different platforms as users move across those platforms. And so content that was easy to find on one platform then becomes harder to find as the user moves to a different device. And we don't want to put any more friction in the way of consumers using your service uh, as possible. There's a lot of competition in the market. And so moving to a single technology platform removes a lot of the complexity um, from those silos and starts to simplify. The next key benefit, optimizing the return on investment on the key part of your portfolio, which is your content. And by this, we mean that moving uh, to a, an integrated technology platform brings together data. And data describes your business. If you can view that holistically, you can see the content how that content is performing, how users are using your service holistically across all devices. In the initial stage of, the, of digital transformation, where the silos are existing in the organization, you have the data, but it exists in those silos and you can't see the complete picture. And finally, growing ARPU by adopting uh, more innovative business models. As I said, even the big global SVOD services are moving to adopt new additional services. And we've worked with one broadcaster who's taken this to the extreme. They have dozens, perhaps even hundreds, of price bundle options that they then use with a recommendations type algorithm to take consumers on a journey and upsell them to additional content um, based on the kinds of content they've been consuming previously. So those are the six core benefits uh, that we've uh, discovered by working with broadcasters and operators globally. But let's focus here on broadcasters. So, Digital transformation in broadcasters. This quote comes from um, a set of papers that are available on the Comcast Technology Solutions website. Where we've expanded on this analysis um, to help broadcasters and operators dive more deeply. So what does digital transformation mean for broadcasters specifically? And I'm calling this out differently here because for operators, it means something different. Operators are finding digital transformation helps them simplify. Operators are bringing together um, multiple networks across multiple countries. And for them, the key goal of this convergence is the simplification of their operations. But broadcasters generally can't expand across borders in quite the same way. Um, they are typically targeting a more limited um, set of demographics, a more limited set of countries. So what does digital transformation get for broadcasters? Well, again, based on working with the broadcasters we do globally, it opens up multiple new possibilities for growth. And in a world where you may be focused primarily on your linear broadcast service, um, targeting a demographic, that mar your market may feel like it's constrained, but we have identified this set of um, uh, growth options. So to analyze, first of all, um, why those growth options work. We use some data from Omdia. Uh, we map their analysis of the broadcaster market globally against those broadcasters that had invested in digital transformation versus those who hadn't. And so the results here show that in terms of growth in plays, you know, a key measure, a uh, key metric of success, um, the growth was faster for those who had made this transition versus those who don't. 26% year on year versus 8% for those who hadn't invested in digital transformation. And similarly, 78% of those broadcasters who had invested were forecasted to grow revenues. 
And so those growth options, um, we've identified nine. Um, we've grouped them here into three categories. So firstly, managing um, or maximizing your library. The key advantage broadcasters have is the rich catalog of content that they have produced. And that content is so rich because it targets a specific market. Even the global SVOD services um, try to localize their content, but they can't do it on quite the same scale as a broadcaster. And so maximizing your um, library is so vital to driving growth. And the first key route to doing that is clearly leveraging uh, the archive that exists. And clearly this means surfacing content, but we don't just mean surfacing all the content. Um, firstly, that will be a navigation and discovery challenge. What we mean here is enhancing the metadata to make that content easier to discover um, using just uh, editorial curation, but also um, artificial intelligence and machine learning to really boost the metadata, even down to the scene level, to make that library easy to surface. We also mean it in an ed editorial sense. So having humans, having people driving behind the scenes to surface the content that is most relevant for users at the time. And in the UK, the Platinum Jubilee being a prime example of that, surfacing old content, archive footage to make um, new programs to bring consumers in. Launching multiple online properties. So moving to the cloud enables the adoption of much more complicated and complex set of workflows. Uh, you can push content to a variety of sources, syndicating to uh, multiple places. And one of the key routes we've seen broadcasters take is to create multiple online properties that support their main VOD catch-up player. So perhaps a uh, show-specific microsite for fans of a particular show that pushes out content along with the long-form content along with uh, clips, podcasts, and other supporting content to really build a buzz around that show. And on the theme of building a buzz, promotion to social media, uh, again, this may seem obvious, but I mean more than just tweeting about the availability of a new show. I mean building social media into your monetization strategy. And so we see broadcasters perhaps publish the first episode of a box set onto social media to drive buzz, or indeed using the enhanced um, capabilities of those complicated and complex workflows to enable clips of content to be pushed to social media much more quickly. And so you can help use social media to build a buzz around, for example, the latest sports event final or reality TV final. So the next category is building one-to-one -one consumer relationships. For most of their history, broadcasters have focused on the broad. In other words, trying to push content to as wide an audience as possible. But the online world opens up the possibility for personalization. And so clearly, we need mandatory authentication. Uh, there's no way to personalize content unless you know the user you are dealing with. But then we can build out from there. So addressable advertising, by building relationship with your consumer, um, you can add value both to the existing inventory that you have and also the new inventory that the online properties open up. Uh, as I mentioned, the multiple online properties, that creates new inventory for uh, pre-rolls and mid-rolls that have higher CPMs than their broadcast equivalents because of the addressability. And then finally, in this category, tailored offers and promotions. I mentioned that broadcaster who was moving to a really fragmented set of bundles to really uniquely target individual consumers with specific offers. Moving online means you are not constrained by a single business model. You can build specific offers and promotions for individual users. And then the final category, be where your audiences are. I mentioned earlier that we want to avoid, as far as possible, putting any friction in the way of consuming content. There's enough competition in this market as it is without your um, interface or service providing uh, any friction to using that. So being where your audiences are is vital. And that may seem obvious, but starting with recapturing the big screen. For many broadcasters who are are working in a siloed environment, it may feel like the broadcast, uh, the, sorry, the large screen is the domain of the broadcast side of the business and the small screen is the domain of the online portion of the business. But when broadcasters transition to that second stage of digital transformation, 
a whole load of new opportunities open up. This could be as simple as using uh, interactive technologies like HBB TV to link from a live broadcast into your catch-up player. Uh, it can mean using those interactive services to provide um, pop-up channels and uh, thematic services around key pieces of the content. But it also means, and this is really important, to target all of the connected TV platforms with your uh, service to ensure that you are always there with the right platform. And that takes us to the penultimate point here, time, device, and place shifting. Again, it's vital to be ensuring that your service is not putting any barriers in the way of consumption. Time, device, and place shifting is something that's very um, common for operator platforms, but broadcasters also need to think in the same way to ensure that whenever the user wants to watch content, their service is the most available at that time. And then the final one here is perhaps the most difficult for many broadcasters. International diversification is harder for many broadcasters due to uh, licensing and commissioning and production, um, the, the, the background of the content. But most broadcasters have an expat audience abroad, and they are hungry for a taste of home. As I mentioned, global SVOD providers are trying to provide localized content, but that never really quite captures the, um, the uniqueness of a, of a home market. There was a, an article, I think, in one of the UK papers about um, a Netflix school, uh, a high school show, and just saying high school gives, gives part of the story away. Um, they tried to make the, uh, Netflix had tried to make this uh, series about UK schools, but they'd done it from a very US mindset. And so the way the school was set up with lockers and the terminology just didn't really quite capture how schools are in the UK. And so for a UK audience, it feels slightly artificial. And that's something that, that's the advantage that broadcasters really have. They get that home market and there is that audience abroad craving for that taste of home. So, as I said, this isn't something we've just produced on our own. This comes from working with broadcasters and operators globally, uh, Mediaset being a key example. They set out on their digital transformation journey back in 2017. It's taken them a number of years to build on this. Um, and in their words, this is a portfolio then, and a roadmap that's still very full. They're still working on these and developing these ideas. Uh, we've highlighted here, um, just about comes through, apologies, the green isn't quite as bright on the screen. Um, we've highlighted the areas where they've invested so far. And the point here is that this isn't something that you guys need to deploy 100% of immediately. You get the benefits by unlocking this of the roadmap, but you only get access to that roadmap when you start pivoting to thinking from a digital first mindset. So digital transformation then, we know the destination. We know the benefits that journey will deliver, but how can we ensure our journey is successful? And that's the final key part of my presentation here today. And so here we come to a piece of technology, and I've tried to keep this as technology light as possible, um, but we need to dive a little bit into how uh, a transformed cloud-based video platform will work. Everybody talks about needing microservices, uh, and, but generally they talk about microservices purely from the perspective of scalability. And yes, scalability is a key challenge to solve because unlike in broadcast, um, where it doesn't matter how many users are connecting, when you're in the cloud, when you're dealing with online audiences, you need to be able to scale rapidly to handle the big uh, growth in audiences that may suddenly appear on your service around uh, prime content. And so scalability is key, but it's not the only part of the story. Microservices can enable more than just scalability. So we talk about how microservices enable you to configure your platform, uh, to program your platform rather than just configuring it. And what we mean here is that rather than packaging those microservices inside a black box that then only gives the benefit to the video platform in terms of scalability, we argue those services should be made available to all of our customers. And so each of our services has a programmable API. Now for the technologists in the audience, I'm sure that's um, an exciting prospect for those who aren't technologists, what's the benefit of that? Well, it means that rather than having to bend your organization's strategy around the capabilities of the video platform, it means the video platform can adapt to meet your exact strategy. And so when it comes to unlocking those 
uh, growth options that I described just now, um, you can do that in a much more flexible way. So that's the end of the presentation. It would be um, remiss of me not to have any kind of product pitch in here at all, but I'll keep it short. This is our cloud TV solution. Um, as I said, it's enabling broadcasters and operators across the globe with their own digital transformation stories. It's something that's available as a coherent package, but you can also take individual elements of that to support your own transformation stories. Thank you very much. Um, we're obviously running very late, but if there's any questions, then uh, I don't know if we have a microphone, but if not, uh, yes. Thank you for the presentation. But um, I think one thing that was kind of covered, but not in that much detail, is around the security of the content. So you covered stuff like um, you know, reaching the wider devices, reaching the audience where they want. Um, but what about creating content and rights so that you know, a particular content can only be accessed by a particular geographic region, for example, or if there's any time-sensitive release? So this comes back to the programmability message. Um, we believe, I mean, you're asking the question so clearly you've had some experience with this. We see from the organizations we work with that um, the breadth of content rights and rules is becoming ever broader, particularly operators as they move in the super aggregation type model. Oh, crikey, that's, didn't realize I was up there, sorry. Um, so particularly with operators as they move into uh, super aggregation, they're bringing together content contracts uh, that have multiple different rules associated with them, even different content providers having different rules. And so the programmability is what enables your service to, or enables the video, our video platform to adapt specifically to your service. With a more black box type approach, you're right, the ability to really adapt to those details is limited. But once you can program the details in, it's very easy to turn the content contracts into programmable elements within the platform. And so our service provides all of those kinds of features. And uh, I'm happy to catch up with you later on to run through that in more detail. Any other, uh, any other questions? No? Perfect. In which case, thank you very much for your time. Take care. Thank you.